Iran has said quite explicitly that it intend that it intends to maintain a policy of you know, sort of positive relations with its neighbors in the region, and for the most part, that has been their policy. They they argue, for instance. Saudi Arabia is the home of the Hajj. That's where everybody goes on pilgrimage. And in one of the pilgrimages back in 1988, 87, uh, the Saudis, the, the Iranians were carrying out a, a they, pilgrims are not supposed to be political. And so the Iranians, who were very political at that point, were standing up and shouting and, and, carrying, and, and holding demonstrations of their own, within their own encampment, if you like. And the Saudis came in to, to break these up, and a riot ensued, and something like 400 Iranians were killed by the Saudis. Um, uh, that led to a break in relations. Uh, it led to some very, very bad feelings. And then it was repaired. And uh, the... The Saudis, in fact, have have contributed to uh, they've actually invested in Iranian uh, infrastructure and the like. But apart from that, the the big problem right now the the the, 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 the relationship between Iran and Saudi Arabia has always been tense, and it's going to stay that way. They don't like each other; they really don't. So, but they live with each other and for the most part have managed to do that, though it has its ups and downs. What has happened recently is that you'll recall that we went into Iraq and we eliminated what the Saudis saw as a Sunni uh, leadership, and we replaced it for the first time in basically memory, the first time almost ever. You have to go back to Ottoman days to find a, a case of Shia ruling in uh, Iraq. We, from their point, from the Saudi point of view, we installed that regime. The Saudis saw this as part of a sort of grand scheme in which the Shia were going to come in and take over the Middle East. And there are all kinds of scare theories and various other things. So they decided to make the Middle East, from their perspective now, they see the Middle East as us and them. And us is Sunni and them is Shia. And so any place where the Shia rise up or raise their head is an attack on their Saudi national interests. That, they've never recognized Iraq. They don't have an embassy in, in, in Baghdad. They don't, have a, they don't have an ambassador in Baghdad. They refuse to recognize this regime because it's Shia. And when you look at what happened in Syria, you had peaceful demonstrations, but most of them were, Shi were Sunnis against the Alawites, who are sort of crypto-Shia, they're half-Shia. Um, and the Saudis came in and began arming them with vast amounts of money and so forth. And it, it wasn't all, all their fault, but the Saudis came in and said, this is a sectarian battle. It's a battle between good and evil, it's a battle between Sunni and Shia, and that's what we have to fight against. And it is now, for sure. And so the whole Middle East, to some degree, partly due to our own rather clumsy activities. When, when, we, when we did that in, in Iraq, I remember talking to a very senior official in the US government who uh, was talking about the horrible things that Iran was doing in Iraq and various other places and, and the whole Shia business. And I said, you know, uh, Mr. Ambassador, don't you think we had something to do with that because of our actions in, in Iraq? And he stopped for a second, he said, well, we didn't mean to. <laughs> and I think that's true. I don't think we knew what we were doing. And in the process, we left a lot of wreckage behind us that is now, everybody is trying to dig out of it. So the sectarian breakdown in the Middle East is very much being funded and supported by Saudi Arabia and they're doing it as a pro sort of proxy war against the Iranians. And that is coming out of, even the, even the Egyptians now are talking about this. Egypt, Egypt doesn't have any Shia. I mean, they don't even exist 
in Egypt. I mean, there are a few people scattered around here and there. But most Egyptians have never met a Shia in their life. But they're still talking about the Shia threat to the Middle East. So the Saudis have done their work very well, and we helped them along the way without realizing what we were doing. And I'm afraid that it's going to get worse before it gets better.